I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and in a recent video I showed how uh, green the Instant Pot is as a cooking method. And in the video I cooked a lentil soup and I showed, using my uh, kilowatt over here, how much power the Instant Pot was using at different points in the cooking cycle. And I saw that when I used the saute function, it was drawing a fair amount of power, about 1176 watts. Um, and then when it was pressurizing, it was sort of going on and off and using power and then uh, not using power for a little bit and, um, you know, continuing in that pattern until it was fully pressurized. And when I stopped the video, it was at full pressure and uh, had about 15 minutes of cooking time left and it had used 0.68 kilowatt hours getting to that point. And I just assumed, you know, just based on what it was using right then, uh, that for the next 15 minutes, it would be drawing basically full power to stay at that pressurized cooking setting. So I estimated that the total usage would be about one kilowatt hour. Um, and I actually looked back and I was really surprised to see once the cooking was finished, um, it actually only used 0.7 kilowatt hours. So again, when I stopped my video and there's still 15 minutes of cooking left at high pressure, um, I, you know, assumed it was going to keep going at about the same rate and actually it only used 0 0.02 kilowatt hours more of power to finish that cooking cycle. So this tells me something really interesting, which is that it seems like the Instant Pot um, actually uses power when it's uh, doing saute um, and then it uses power again when it's warming up and getting up to pressure. But actually, at least for this 15 minutes cooking time, once it reached full pressure, it really didn't need to add any more power. Um, so I think that's really interesting. You know, I had assumed, again, that uh, maintaining that pressure inside of the cooking vessel would require a lot of power. But actually, it seems like it uses almost none at all. So that tells me this is an even greener cooking method than I originally said in my first video. Because, you know, again, I thought it would be using a full kilowatt hour and it really only used 0.7. So it's emitting less CO2 than I had thought and it's even less expensive per portion than I thought. And, you know, I think the reason that that is is that once it does reach full pressure, it's basically just letting your food sit at high temperature and high pressure inside um, of that cooking vessel. And it doesn't really have to do a whole lot more to continue to add um, pressure and to add heat to it. Uh, unlike with, you know, cooking on a stove where you need to continuously be adding some amount of retained heat in the, uh, the actual cooking uh, pan. But, you know, basically you're just continuing to add um, add power in order to continue to cook. And certainly in a microwave, that's the case. Um, you know, you're basically continuously uh, using power. So it actually makes it an even greener, uh, you know, cooking device because it's getting up to pressure and then just using that pressure and heat to finish cooking the food. Um, and that means it's, you know, under a pound of CO2 for that whole recipe that I made. And it's also, you know, even cheaper, probably 25 cents even here in California to cook the whole 16 portions of my lentil soup. So very surprising, not what I expected, um, not what I projected in the video, but uh, in a positive and again, you know, really interesting way. If you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel, it really helps.